Good afternoon, I'm Nick D for VIS. Welcome to episode 6 of Kamal's Empire. Uh, today we're going to be doing more economic uh, decisions, or at least we're going to be finishing the 14 economic missions. Then uh, we'll try to reel in the Arab Villiers, and then we should try to reform the Ottoman military. I got a complaint, uh, well it wasn't a complaint, more a suggestion that I should, uh, I'm going to spend less time reading international events and spending time paused, and I'm going to spend more time just uh, getting uh, the game played. So, let's unpause. Um, we have the Chilean Argentinian War, Republicans winning the Greek referendum, uh, Collins dissolves the. That's an Irish thing, I can't read it. Not because it's Irish, but because I, I, I wouldn't pronounce it correctly. Literally, uh, after the Republicans were elected, uh, my taxes overthrew the Greek government. Uh, but education issues in southern Iraq. Uh, traveling reports have reached us from southern Iraq, where parents appear to stop their children from attending the state schools due to fear of Sunni indoctrination. These citizens, predominantly following the Shiite faith, are such obstructing the education of their children and enlarging the social divide between the Sunni and Shia Arabs as this uh, limits their future abilities. Little has been done by the Iraqi administration, however, as it plays uh, into the Sunni superiority policy, which has in recent years led to uh, a significant decrease in Shia officials. Furthermore, they also claim that without education, these people remain apolitical, as such forming no threat to their own positions. Uh, we're going to encourage further Shia enlistment, as we are, uh, we were, we were trying to get them educated to serve the empire better, but DDY absorbs the Palestinian railways, uh, caused by a looming bankruptcy of the Palestine railways, um, uh, the Ottoman State Railways, or TDY, has been able to purchase them and have reintegrated them with the main Ottoman lines. Already plans are made to swap railway gauge to better tie, to tie them better to the existing Ottoman net, and the creation of a direct line between Haifa and Jaffa for both goods and passengers. He who controls over the railroad controls the people. So, uh, Haifa is down here. Where's Jaffa? It's probably, probably right here. Uh, we could try to find it. Oh, hmm. the well, Kingdom of Sardinia declares war on the Legion of Two Sicilies. Uh, the second Garibaldi has uh, joined with the Kingdom of Sardinia, so Avola is sort of done for. Uh, but with the fall of Boston, the Athens of America has fallen. Oh, yeah, Canada's actually... What well, was that? The, the, the West Indies Federation actually took Boston. That's pretty funny. Uh, however, they haven't capitulated them, so New England's probably going to win, but... The Neue Volker Show arrives in Constantinople. The Germans have put on a fantastic live show, part carnival, carnival part zoo. It's got over a thousand authentic African tribesmen and women and exotic animals to cite protests from some of the city imams. The show is dehumanizing, comparing it to a human zoo. The show drew in over 1 to 100,000 attendees. It's all good, clean fun. It is not good, clean fun. That is pretty messed up. Uh, it's literally human zoos, which did exist. Like, that's not something made up, but those did exist. Uh, but let's, um, let's restructure the Yerkan e Harbiya Mektebi so that we can get the director of military factories. The Yerkan e Harbiya Mektebi, or Ottoman Military College, serves as the crowning achievement in the education officers of the army. It is destined to give ample preparation to the best students who have climbed the rank of our system. Nonetheless, the college is in dire need of restructuring as the curriculum has seen little change since the Weltkrieg and regards the combined arms severely lacking. We also now have 20 political power, so let's see if we can find somewhere to reduce the unrest. Let's do Baghdad, and you'll watch, look at this, uh, resistance and uh, compliance. Once we get it down to low, gone. So, the more provinces we can do that to, the less we have to reinforce with guns. So, we'll try to get as much political power as possible, and I think we'll try to get the Kurdish Villiers done first, because they're all at medium-ish. So, we, it, all it takes is one decision. Um, but after we do this, we actually won't do the director of military factories. We will do uh, reeling in their uh, villiettes. So then we can crack down in their parties. So we can make a hundred political party. Uh, hundred political power, not party, yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, see, New England won. They they held out. But trouble in Dubai. Tensions have been rising. The sheikdom of Dubai in the Persian Gulf as this catastrophic collapse of the Persian of the pearl trade has caused massive shockwaves in the small city. Nakudas, captains of pearl fishing boats, are forced to stay in the port year round as competition with the synthetic pearl originating in Japan has saturated the market. An already smaller pie due to a global economic catastrophe. Further, the mon- furthermore, the monopoly on power of the sheik has given rise to a reform movement calling if not for his outright abdication, at least for the installment of a democratic body in the force in the form of the Majlis, under threat from a supposed assassination plot by a group of local merchants, disgruntled princes and expatriates, the Ottoman flees dispatched a small vessel to the Trucial coast to deter any open aggression against the Sheikh, but tensions have only further escalated, with the ruler and his supporters entrenched on the Bur Dubai side of the creek, and his opponents on the other side of the area, and it seems the whole Sheikhdom is spoiling for a fight. Sporadic gunfire has reportedly been heard in the city, and meddlers in the neighboring uh, Sheikhdoms are uh, seemingly looking for a chance to pounce and back their horse in the fight to come. And uh, we're going to force the Sheik to concede. This will increase the integration of the Villiers. But uh, these uh, these states, we already know, they're gonna we're going to lose them during the Desert War. So we'll just let like Saudi Arabia take them and then we'll kill Saudi Arabia. Uh, but the Union State has fallen. Uh, the Western Command Center going crazy. Uh, but we have the formation of the Bel- the foundation of the Belgrade Pact. Hopefully the Balkans won't start another world war. Uh, yeah, Bulgaria, your time is up. Uh, when, the, when the event fires, I'll go silent, because I want you guys to hear it. I, I've actually never, like, sat down and listened to the Balkan War super event. So, can't really, um, say anything about it. But I think the Black Belt just capitulated. Or the Black Belt Revolt, at least. Yeah sad and we have 24 political power let's go uh, up here get this down to low and look at that more guns freed up that's beautiful uh, but let's get more uh, iron from the Russian state or at least uh, steel from the Russian state uh, we should I feel like we probably have yeah maybe uh, we need better extraction because we have a steel state right here but we do have a lot of chromium so that's good um, uh, uh, now it's real in the Arab Vilayets. As political control over the Turkish heartland increased, so should we extend to our Arab subjects in the Mashriq and Tripletania, be it through uh, political appointments, economic developments, or military force. The old aristocratic order will be pushed out to make place for the new Ottoman citizen, a young, intellectual, and proud servant of the Sultan. Um, and after that, we'll do um, we'll do cracking down on Arab parties. And then we'll start some of these reforms, such as abolishing the Macelle Code to get 100 political power. But uh, camel wrestling for the Air Force. As the economic uh, depression caused by Black Monday crisis has taken a heavy toll on our empire, the budget for the military has also seen a significant decrease. In order to make up some of our losses, the Ottoman National Aviation League has decided to host a fundraiser in the shape of a spectacular uh, camel wrestling championship, the like San Anatolia has never seen before. Um, based on the old Turkic traditions over uh, 2300 years old, the Turkish form of camel wrestling, two male Tulu camels wrestle, typically in response to a female camel in heat being led before them. The camels uh, fight by using the necks as leverage to force, to force their opposition to fall down. A camel is declared the winner if its competitor falls to the ground or flees from the fight. Although the practice is regarded as backwards by many in the OHF as severe cruelty by animal rights supporter, the Turk Oklari which is actually the Turkish Nationalist Party we have, uh, have applauded this initiative calling it a grand celebration of Turkish culture. May the best camel win. Hmm. I actually did not notice that until I'm recording this, that the, that, like, the Turk Akhlari was this Turk Akhlari, which is like the Turkish Nationalist Party, like I said. Uh, for infantry, let's get uh, improved infantry equipment. Um, we, probably, we probably have enough artillery to, like, slap on some artillery to our uh, divisions, but I'm gonna s- slap one more factory on it. We'll wait like 200 days. Uh, because we have, um, let's see how much men we have. So we have 36 uh, infantry battalions, and if we had a support, I mean uh, 36 infantry divisions, if we had uh, artillery support company to it, it'd be 12 times 36, so we, we don't have enough. Enver Bay cigarettes take over, huzzah! And I, I didn't really want to read that one because it's not really like important, you know. Um, we could uh, let's do employee Turk program. Actually, this will sort of tank our stability a little bit. 
we'll we'll hold off on that. And we have thirty political power. I keep forgetting. Uh, let's get this Philly at right here. Look at that. The clo the more we do this, the more we do this, the more divisions we can start to recruit. Cause we're we're not wasting equipment on garrisons anymore. Let's reel in these villiettes. We should literally be able to do that decision, like by the time this finishes. And, and but now let's crack down in our parties. Though, uh, throw their uh, print presses in Beirut and the radio broadcast from Cairo. Also, of Arab movements have popped up throughout Greater Syria, fighting against the modernization of the empire and trying to persuade people that an Arab nation would be beneficial to their lives. It is the duty of any decent government to spare the people from these uh, delusions. Uh, but let's um, let's go down here. Let's uh, find Syria. Uh, that's Tripolitania. Let's hmm. Uh, should, oh, there we go. Uh, centralization of the Syrian lands. Let's uh, centralize tax collection. The present structures established within the wider Syrian region has allowed for a wide plethora of sanctioned tax collectors, ranging from the millet level, which is this, which distinguishes between religion, the vilayet level, which collects a certain amount of taxes based on approximate uh, geographical location, the city level, which collects gifts for the Damascus elite. Altogether, this not only led to great confusion amongst the taxpayers, but also outrage as the tax pressure seemingly increases by the day, as each level authority deems itself worthy of more and more income. To eradicate this problem, a new plan has been proposed to combine all tax collection within a singular agency located in Beirut, and from there on better regulate the expenses of the local government. And I'll, we'll do that. This will give 100 political power and increase the integration. Yeah, I think it will harm our political power a little bit. But monarchy restored in Greece. That was, it went from a republic to a dictatorship to, uh, to a monarchy again. Um, hold up, hold up. Let's see if they could restore Byz Byzantium. Oh, yeah, they they probably could. Uh, but we have uh, two big events now. Uh, Sheikh Saeed bin Maktoum disbands Dubai Majlis. After being forced to uh, concede to the Dubai reform movement, agree with the empowerment of the Majlis, it seems that real progress could have been achieved in Dubai, but these efforts seem to have been in vain as only a few months after their creation, the Sheikh had crushed the movement with an iron fist. Matters have come to head with the Majlis under its leader Hashid bin Rashid. Uh, Hashir bin Rashid restricted the ruler to a uh, uh, 10,000 rupees of the state revenues for his personal use. Uh, enraged by the decision, the sheikh formally disbanded the Majlis and decided to settle this argument once and for all, taking advantage of his son's wedding to Latifa bin Hamdan of Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi, I keep saying Abu D Dubai. I have a really funny story, me being at a Halloween party, first year of college. Uh, I, I I was talking to like two girls. One of them did a study pro study way program offered by my university in Abu uh, Dhabi. I was like, oh cool, you guys went to Abu Dubai? And she was like, no, Abu Dhabi. And so that was just funny. But uh, Saeed's loyal, loyal Bedouin who were brought into town for the ceremony drew their swords and proceeded to kill various high-ranking members of the Bani Rashid, amongst whom the chairman of the Majlis. Uh, crumbling apart due to the, this catastrophe, the remainder of the reform movement has fled to the sheikdom of Sharjah and in hopes of gaining support of the sheikh and returning now uh, Sheikh Saeed. Tensions are rising on the Trucial coast, uh, but the Madan shelters criminals. Uh, the Madan or Marsh Arabs who inhabited the marshes near Bas near the city of Basra have long been a thorn in the side of central authority in the region, just as their marshland home had been all but terra incognita for the Ottoman administration. Explorers who venture on into their lands never return, and the Madan who cooperate with the outside authorities often find themselves severely punished by their local leaders in retaliation. The inhospitable nature of their marshes has up and down now mostly ensured their autonomy and their political apathy towards the Ottoman regime has kept them off their radar. Um, Recent Assyrian damming had settlement projects made in an effort to set, develop new agricultural land and flush out the Shia resistance, fighting their Assyrian settlers, and it's forced them to take more active stands. Now the Marsh Arabs are not only sheltering fugitives from Assyrian operations, operations, but also those of the Baghdadi Valley. Uh, the latter, angered by this uh, development, has requested reinforcements from Constantinople to bring them in line and post both taxes and conscription uh, for the Ottoman army. Um, let's see. Uh, it's requesting reinforcements. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, leave them be. Hmm. And with 20 political power, let's just install loyal administrators to get rid of the resistance. And look at that. We have a gun surplus. So let's trade up five new divisions. I think we'll stick them on the border for Armenia. We'll, we'll, we'll evenly distribute them. But for now, we'll just have them there. Hmm. 
And yeah, you can see we have high resistance in some states, especially Syria, which we'll probably uh, we'll probably use our next uh, 20 uh, political power to get these two back to normal. A war on the Trucial Coast. Since the Red Wedding, that's the title of today's episode, tensions have been rising quickly between the sheikdoms of Dubai and Sharjah, as those that as those that escaped murder at the hands of Saeed's tribesmen fled to Sharjah in the hopes of finding a benefactor for the cause, finding a willing ally in Sheik, the Sheikh Sultan of Sharjah, the new leader of the reform movement, Mani bin Rashid, as regained the momentum and tribesmen of Sharjah moved quickly into the Sanjir on the Dubai side of the Khan Greek. Uh, face of a fragile support base, Sheikh Said of Dubai uh, decided to answer their act with an official declaration of war. Sending his troops within four miles of Sharjah, the two camps quickly came to blows, and traditional Bedouin style hovered the two sides exchange an accurate fire, preventing any degree of significant bloodshed. When the truce was signed only a few days later, both sides had run out of ammo, leaving one Sharjah man killed and two Dubai men prisoner. Since fighting had become impossible due to lack of material, both sides have uh, have for agreed to a three-month truce to wait the next shipment coming in from Iraq. Let's hope they'll soon uh, sign peace. So, yeah, that that really just ended up with two like two guys being arrested or uh, put under imprisonment and one guy dying. Imagine being the one guy dying. But um, oh yeah, Middle Africa is going to collapse. We have uh, Herman Gorin in charge, the sovereignist movement, and the Western Command Center going crazy. Okay, let's use this uh, 20 political power. Let's first get this down to medium. And then with the 100 political power we're about to get, we'll get it down to low. Uh, but... I shut up for that because I wanted to listen to the super event, but the final nail is being nailed. Um, and we have the fourth Bal the fourth Balkan War. What's with Balkans and the war and war all the time? Um, we have the option to jump in and try to seize uh, Western Thrace. That's not smart. We're not going to do that. It's it's a waste of equipment basically. Follow Detroit. Yeah, the Western Command Center is going even crazier. Uh, but we have 100 political power now first before we do anything. Let's get these uh, Viliots down. So we got that to low. Low. Uh, that's slow. Low. Um, let's find a medium. Low right here. And we're back down to 7. But let's now do abolish the missile code. Following the suggestions made by the Judicial Commission, the time has finally come to rid ourselves of the Nacelle. A new civil code, fully secular in nature, will treat all Ottoman citizens as equals, and will show the desire to tear down the last conservative anchor points. So, after that, we'll try to, I think, reform the Millet system. This will get rid of uh, institutional Islam, or at least modify it, give us more political power gain. Um, but we have the Nordic Council. That's the first time seeing that faction. Let's actually see who's the members of it. I'll leave the game running. Oh, Norway, Denmark. That is the first time I've seen that happen. That's going to be interesting, because usually Norway joins the Third International, Sweden joins the Reichspakt, and Denmark is also in the Reichspakt. Uh, we have 20 political power again. Let's go to Kurdistan. Let's get this down. Next, uh, 20 political power. Well, actually, this is more like Georgia, but expansion of the Greek Merchant Navy. Let's hope they employ Turks as well. Oh yeah, Bulgaria, trying to survive, but we'll have uh, 20 political power again, then we can just, we also, let's see, Iraq, yeah, we could get Soleimani, uh, Soleimani down, and East Turkestan is capitulated, and the second great occidental schism, I'm, uh, this is where, exactly where it crashed last time, so I really, really hope it does not crash here, uh, but today, in the early hours of the morning, uh, Cardinal Eugene Tesserand on the balcony in the Cathedral of St. Philip in Algiers announced to the world that a new pope has been elected and that the interregnum was over. However, this pope is not the Bishop of Rome who currently rules in Rome. No, this is entirely new Pontifex Maximus. Spurred on by disagreements with the Church, the Catholic Church within France is now split from Rome at the behest of the French Grand Master, Joseph Denard. The new pope, also known as Marcel... 
Oh, it's Lefebvre. <laughs> it's taken the name of Pius VII, or Pius XII, I mean, and is an altered church list. Rome, along with the majority of the Catholic Church, has decried the schism, with a new pope and its legionary backers claim this will not rest until Rome is under a rightful pontiff. Just what is to befall Catholicism to this remains to be seen. A papal schism, what is this, the 1300s? We got the Ottoman Empire, a papal schism. Well, actually, the Ottoman Empire would have been uh, a little anachronistic, but let's see, they have, um, yeah, there we go, they have, uh, they can, uh, like, once they take over Rome, they can just, uh, sit, like, put the Pope on, by, uh, cleans Rome, cleanse Rome of masonry scrap, and then have a council, second council of Trent, and make sure that legionary is Catholicism, and Catholicism is legionaryism. Uh, but proclamation of the Ottoman Civil Code, before I read that, let's get some of these uh, vilayets back to normal. Uh, let's see. Let's find anywhere else. Uh, right there. Yeah, okay. That's good. That's very good. But proclamation of the Ottoman Civil Code. Replacing the Sharia-based Macelle, which has been in use since the start of the Tanzima era, due to the second during the second half of the nineteenth century. Uh hold up. The new Ottoman Civil Code has included substantial differences concerning both the status of women and the influence of religion within the Ottoman society, which has already caused a significant discontent in more conservative areas of the empire. Following the rising feminist movement and following the policies concerning co education during the twenties, the new Civil Code now officially recognizes men and women as equals, uh, bans polygamy, makes legal marriage compulsory, and implements a wide variety of acts con uh, concerning personal freedom. A grand day for the Empire. That actually gives us a good bit of stability. Oh, here we go. Here we go. March of the Forefathers. Um... But let's reform the Ottoman language. Based on a Perso-Arabic script, many of the more radical reformers within the party believe the Ottoman language is needlessly complicated and therefore uh, hindering literacy programs. They've uh, therefore pushed towards the adoption of the Latin script, the necessary adjustments to fit the Turkish language. And we'll do the Turkish language committee. I love this song, by the way. Uh, AG and I, let's, well, let's get that down, we're using our, um, our decision, actually, let's get Cyprus down also. Uh, but, hi, let's get that down to medium, and once we get another thing, let's get it down even further. But, yeah, uh, oh, and we have the Ikhwan Revolt. Openly declaring the revolt for the restoration of true Islamic rule, as defined by the Wahhabist preachers, a coalition of various Arab, Arab tribal leaders have bound together in opposition to their suzerain in the hopes of breaking the central power of the state and restoring the decentralized fiefdoms of old. Although there has uh, reportedly been agreement concerning future ownership of the various Arab provinces, if you expect the fragile alliance to survive a possible victory in the jihad, hide your women and children, the Iqlan are here. And uh, they are solidly Islamist. They only have um, three six divisions. Sultan of Najed has uh, six to fourteen. So the Ikhwan aren't gonna win. Uh, but let's get um, new support equipment. Or at least um yeah, new um I, I I the Union of Brazil, hold up. United Communes of Brazil. I'm I'm seeing a l I did I didn't set I did not set that up, I should say. I did not set that up. So, that's my first time seeing this. Uh, Zadora Diaz Lopez. Um, Russia's moving on the Count Connet. They're actually a Buddhist Connet. Uh, the Counts are really interesting people. But, uh, let's get this down to low. With well, that, look at that. We're, st we're starting to build up a stockpile of guns. We have about 2,000 guns. In fact, we could probably trade up more divisions. So, we have five divisions. Um... Uh, Let's stick uh, three here, and two will go on this border. Let's actually train up some more cavalry divisions. Got yeah, um, that's funny. They actually, I they had a support company. I didn't know that. We probably should be uh, making support equipment. That that would be smart. We'll just stick a couple factories like that because we're we're making enough uh, guns now that we're uh, getting the 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 like the. Revolts down, but we are also out of time. Uh, Nick D for VIS. Apologies if I just actually touched the mic while wiping my nose, but I'll see you guys next time.